Knowing that 600,000 people die from malaria each year and 2 million more get sick from malaria, what, how accessible is the malaria vaccine and what are the challenges to its distribution and use? Yeah, so Valerie, you ask uh, an extremely important question. You know, in public health, we say that it's better to have an imperfect tool at scale than a perfect tool that nobody accesses. And the reality is that the RTSS vaccine, which was the first vaccine that WHO recommended, was not very accessible and still is not very accessible. In fact, the manufacturer was not able to commit more than 20 million doses for the first three years of approval. Uh, this is a, max, a vaccine that is targeted mostly at African countries where most of the malaria parasites are Plasmodium falciparum, the parasite against which the vaccine was developed. If you consider the fact that the vaccine was approved by WHO for use in areas with moderate to high malaria transmission, the estimations that WHO had were that in those places in Africa, in African settings where malaria is moderate to high, there are about 25 million kids born every year. Now, the RTSS is a four-dose vaccine, meaning that Africa needs about 100 million doses of this vaccine every year. If we are in a situation where we cannot guarantee even 20 million doses for the first three years of production, then saying that it's a drop in the ocean is probably an understatement. But that is the situation that we have. So in fact, before the second vaccine was approved, WHO was already working with countries on the distribution of limited doses of vaccines, where they were trying to imagine how do we share these limited doses. This is a reflection of what public health system in a neglected system a situation looks like. Because on the other hand, you can imagine, you can remember that this was the time when a lot of countries had uh, um, stockpiles of unused COVID vaccines, with billions of doses. On the other side of the world, the country, the, the entire continent of, I don't know, 40 countries or so, in the endemic countries, were just praying for 100 million doses every year. And the, the world couldn't even guarantee 20 million in three years. Now, the, this has slightly changed uh, because um, the motivation for the developers of R21 vaccine, which is the second vaccine, their motivation was that they were not only looking for a good vaccine, but actually a manufacturable vaccine. And uh, I do understand that one of the reasons that the initial vaccine was not widely accessible was because it was not as easily manufacturable, you know, as you would wish. The R2021 vaccine is a lot more manufacturable. The developers are saying that it will be manufactured in hundreds of millions of doses. It will most likely be uh, uh, good pricing and that it will be much more widely available. We wait to see, but we really hope that this is the case because as good as a product might be, a vaccine might be, we must also make sure that it is widely accessible, even in remote communities, even by low-income communities, so that it can do the job. Because you gain public health value usually from scale, not from the product itself. Can you deliver it at scale? So that's, that's the situation 